Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And we're here today, this morning, on a Saturday morning at the C. Warren Library to read a book entitled Dubs Runs for President. I'm with my good friend Alec, who you may recognize from the last time we did a uh, State of the Township uh, speech and we had a little skit in the middle of it. And Alex and um, uh, Terabetsky and Ryan Terabetsky, and who was the girl? Layla. Layla, right, right. And they played Jeopardy. I was the host and they played Jeopardy and they insulted me on national TV and got away with it. I'm not sure how that happened. So <clears throat> we're going to read Dubs for President. It's written by Dick Morris, which I guess is the Dick Morris who's the political guy, right? Eileen McGann and Clayton Liotta, illustrated by Clayton Liotta. Okay, here we go. When Dubs came home from Washington, he was feeling so tired that a nice long lap was all he desired. When he closed his eyes, he began to dream of all the wonders that he had seen. The monuments and statues of our president's past and how they built this great country that grew so fast. When Dubs awoke, he no longer felt tired. In fact, he was actually downright inspired. Could I become a famous leader just like them of dogs and cats and women and men? Can I do something dogs usually don't do? Run for president of this great country too. Dubs called over his old friend Daisy and said, I want to run for president. Do you think I'm crazy? I want to help my country and be the first dog elected. And Daisy, you're the vice president I have selected. I can promise that I'll give it my best and my all, but I still want to play with my tennis ball. Dubs for president wondered the newspapers and TV, the first dog candidate that they ever did see. And the Dubs announced that he was really going to run. Reporters came running from everywhere under the sun. Word got around in a matter of days. People were talking about Dubs, the latest craze. Everywhere Dubs and Daisy went, they saw that all the crowd wanted was to shake his paw. <laughs> to run for president if you want to win, it's hard to figure out where to begin. So Daisy told Dubs before this race is over, may I recommend that you hire Mr. Carl Rover. <laughs> Carl knows his ins and outs, he knows the ropes, and <clears throat> he'll help us achieve our fondest hopes. You've become overnight a big sensation, but to win, Carl said, you must get the nomination. Let's get to work, we have little time to win the nomination of the party K-9. Iowa was the first state to vote, and Dubs visited every farm, no matter how remote. When he, with, with each hand he shook, and baby he licked. <laughs> he became sure that he would be picked. When the votes came in, Dubs won the state, and now the campaign really started to rate. New Hampshire was the next state on the list, so they drove all night through the rain and the mist. Although the campaign bus was comfy inside, Dubs preferred to run alongside. It's a long way from Iowa to New Hampshire. And once again, he worked his magic. To lose now would just be tragic because people had begun really to heed his message that a dog president was just what we need. But there were other dogs who wanted to run. They felt being president would be such fun. So they met in the canine party debate to see who would be the candidate. But the poodle only doodled while the other dog just barked. So when Dubs told all about his trip to DC, everyone realized what a great president he would be. The other party did not want Dubs to win, so their own campaign they did formally begin. Felix the cat was pretty and fine, so he got the nomination of the party feline. Feline against canine, I don't know. Probably better than what we got now, but I digress. Dubs sat down for his interview on TV, calm and confident and strong as can be. Then to scratch an itch, he rolled on his back and old Carl Rover blew his stack. You've got to sit still in an interview like that, otherwise you'll lose the election to that silly cat. Dubs promised to fight America's worst enemies. To deal with them, Dubs had to, the perfect remedies. Fido Castro, Vladimir Poodle, and Hugo Chihuahua better beware, because Dubs was prepared to go right over there. Dog catcher. <laughs> All the nation's dogs stayed up very late to watch the canine party choose its final candidate. Dubs appeared in the huge convention hall and spoke at great length of his promise for all. I pledge, he said, to give one and all your very own yellow tennis ball. 
It's like a chicken in every pot. And dogs should be allowed, Dub said, then said, to sleep with their owners right on the bed. I always let my dog sleep, dog sleep in my bed when my wife wasn't home. She hated it when I did that, but she never knew. It was our secret. So Dubs faced Felix in general election. One would win, the other faced rejection. They each work hard to get every last vote, campaigning by car, air, train, and boat. Dubs was out every day, sun or rain, traveling around the nation in his own private train. And every time that train came to a stop, Dubs gave a speech and came out on top. A horse named Gallup took a poll, of course, the horse named Gallup, to see which of the candidates was on a roll. Dubs was ahead of Felix, that much was clear. His victory, he realized, was definitely quite near. While watching Wolf News, they saw something unexpected. Dubs got the most votes, he was elected. America was so happy, there was a big celebration. Now Dubs would be president of the world's greatest nation and everyone could finally see just how wonderful democracy can be. But Dub started to get scared. Can I do the job, would I know how? Would I say bow when the nation needed a wow? Being president is a full-time call. Would I have to give up my beloved tennis ball? This is quite serious, it is no joke. But then, with a start, Dub's awoke. No matter how real it often did seem, his candidacy had actually been only a dream. I love my country, but I'm really quite lucky that I'm not the president, I'm just a puppy. But visiting Washington had been such fun that Dubs wanted to see where it all had begun. So Dubs said to Daisy, don't be astounded, I want to go back to where our country was founded. To Philadelphia, the original capital site where America first got democracy, this democracy thing right. And so it was on to Philadelphia for the furry pair to see history that was waiting there. The end. So now the next book, I imagine the next book is about dubs in Philadelphia. There probably is like a whole series here, right? Is there? Do you guys know? Not a series. Not a series? Yeah. Only That's book. Only book? Only book. That's weird that they ended it with Philadelphia. Yeah. Let's go to my book critic now, Alex Lesniak. Alex, what do you think of this book? I feel like it's very funny and how they turned like everything into like dogs like all the um enemies presidents names like Fido, I, Fido Castro <laughs> Vladimir Poodle <laughs> like that was pretty funny and the horse named Gallup yeah all. Carl Rover I think Carl Rover was very clever good good stuff it so, was. so how's school uh school's good you're junior now right I mean seventh grade Se yeah seventh grade. okay it's good yeah how's my buddy Ryan doing you still friends with him yeah, I am. Um, he's doing all right. Good, good. So, so Alec is a mall expert, literally a mall expert. He's been to malls all over the country. He knows everything about malls. First thing he asked me, what's up with Woodbridge Center? <laughs> it's funny, everybody asks me what's up with Woodbridge Center. So, what's, what's, uh, what's the biggest mall in America? Um, the Mall of America located in Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, is that the... Fun fact, Toys R Us actually just reopened in that mall. Oh, really? Yesterday. That's a fun fact. Yesterday night. So, so is it the biggest mall in the country, or the world, or just the country? Just the country. It, it's not even the biggest in the entire continent. That record has to go to the West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Oh. Anybody know that? Cool. Yeah, very fun fact. <laughs> so, we were talking about Lord and Taylor before, um, and they're trying to get another use in there. Everyone, first of all, thinks the mall's gonna be a hospital. No, no, no. That's some knucklehead that puts something on Facebook. And folks, if you listen to knuckleheads on Facebook, please stop. Stop. Don't read it, don't repeat it, don't tell your friends you read this on Facebook because it's probably not true. The mall is not becoming a hospital. We have Raritan Bay like a mile outside of this way in Perth but we have JFK like a mile that way in Edison, we have Robert Wood about a mile that way in Rahway, we don't need a hospital. It's not more apartments, is it? No, it's not going to be more parts. No, it's not going to be more. We said that flat out. We don't know what it's going to be. Well, first of all, it might stay a mall. Sears is really the question. Sears, what's going to happen to Sears? You should, people shouldn't say what's going to happen to the mall. They should say what's going to happen to Sears because that will drive the mall. I don't know what's going to go there. Um, I, have, I think on um, this um, European store called Primark, that 
that really brings like more people to the mall th these days. Like Freehold Raceway Mall in Freehold was like, I wouldn't say a dead mall, but like. Oh well, yes, it was. It was dead. It was dead. Yeah, but then when Primark came, they started to bring the mall back. Now, what's the name, Primark? Yes. How do you spell it? P R I. Um, M A R K. A R K. Yes. And what do they sell? Um, they sell like clothes. And it's like a Marshalls. Oh, okay. Can they handle a whole? Can they handle a whole two Sear store? Or are they too small for the whole Sear store? They could probably handle like the first level or something, or the second. Oh, level. why don't we get you a job working for them? <laughs> I'll take it. Yep. There might be a problem with working papers, because you're not 14 yet, are you? Put in your name. <laughs> He'll be your consultant. Primark. All right. So let's get let's work this out now. There's three f stories on Sears, right? Yeah. So let's get Primark for one of them. What about, give me somebody else. Um, let me think. Um, what would be good for this area? Um, They're starting to put recreational stuff in there. They got, uh, I just saw a go-kart. I was there for Santa Claus Thursday night because he opened up. You wouldn't know the mall's failing when you see what's happened. Th Thursday night it was packed. Mob for Santa Claus. Of course, he's popular. Um, <laughs> but um, they, I saw a bumper car store which I thought was weird, like a place with about a half dozen bumper cars. Small, you know, not for big, big kids, but for smaller kids. And they got the Sequest, they got Dave and Busters, they got an indoor soccer thing, they have the escape room, they have, what else, a bunch of different recreational kind of things that are not retail, really. They're novelty kind of things. The Mall of America has... Oh, like a, a whole amusement park. Oh, yeah? No, they're, that's, they're really starting to incorporate all that stuff. Right. Have you been to the mall in the Meadowlands? Yes. I wouldn't say it's as good as the one in Minnesota. You've been to that one, obviously. Yes, I have. And you think Minnesota is better than New Jersey? Yes. For comparing those two malls, Minnesota is better. It's not a better state. They just have a better mall. No yes. state's better than Jersey. No state will ever be better than Jersey. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So what else? Let's. Your job then is to think of two more anchor tenants for the Sears. And then we'll get the plan. It'll be the Alec plan. And we'll present it to the owners of the mall. There's the owners of the mall aren't really involved anymore. It's what they call receivers. There's, they're legally named to oversee what happens to the mall. So the owners are kind of involved, but not involved. I think if you want, I think you have to have a tenant that occupies the second and the third floor because there's no entrance to the third floor whatsoever. So oh, okay. you can't really, you have to. You have to have a tenant that's two floors, or just take take out the third floor entirely. That'd be expensive. I say let's have two tenants, one for the basement and one for the second and third floors. Deal? Deal. All right, um, let's work that up into a position paper. We call it a white paper, right? You just do a white paper, and you put all these things down, and then you submit it to the boss, and the boss looks at it. He'll probably take it to the board of directors, probably invite you to a board meeting. You get up there and say, I think this is what we should do at Woodbridge Center. He's right, though. There's no entrance to the third floor. I never thought of that. This is his passion. All right, let's, you, before we present anything, give me one more tenant besides Primark. I'm, try, I'm trying to think what would be a good tenant that, like... Not close. It can't be closed if you already have a close. Um, I guess maybe, like, a little go-kart alley would work. Go-kart alley? Yeah, because they... Because uh, there are a few malls out there that do that. That's interesting. Wouldn't they be better outside, though? They're all inside now. Oh, that thing. Oh, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, I went to that when it opened. I didn't ride the go-kart. I was too big for it. I, mean, I figured if I got in it, they'd never get me out. In, so there's a small premise called Westfield Garden State Plaza. I don't think this has happened. This will happen. But um, it is a very high possibility. Like they, they had a J.C. Penney that closed in like 2015 or something, 2015, 2018, um, and they're putting like a Nerf alley there. I feel like that would be pretty good for this area. Nerf alley. Yeah, like a Nerf gun alley. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. Yeah, they're, because they're putting one in Primus. All right, I got a question for you. Now this is a serious question, trivia question. I believe there have been 11 anchor stores in Woodbridge Center since it opened. So let's go one by one and you tell me what they all were. 
take one store at a time and we'll go through all the anchors that were there. Go ahead. A and S. Yep. Stay with that stay with that building. What was there next? Then Sears. Right. So that one's done. You got two. Stearns. Okay, take then that building. Macy's. Um yep. JC Penny was always JC Penny, I'm pretty sure. Nope. No, uh, keep going. I think Stearns and, and um, Macy's is right. Um, I'll go back to J.C. Penney. Um, no, Fortune Oaks. Go ahead. That's right. Um, there, there, there were a lot. Um, think like. What is but what did Fortune Oaks become? Boss Cops. I know right, that. Right, right. Was J.C. Penney? Oh no, J.C. Penney was something else. I think. You guys correct me if I'm wrong after I give him a shot. Um, I think Glayens, a sporting goods store. That's perfect. And well, then it became Dick's. Right. Galleons. Galleons became Dick's. I think JCPenney was something else. No, I don't think so. I googled the history of the mall. It said they built a JCPenney from scratch. I'm pretty sure. He's yeah. killing me. <laughs> All right, then. They, fun fact that JCPenney actually relocated from Menlo Park Mall. Yeah, that I remember. I used to work at Woolworths in Menlo Park Mall, and J.C. Penney was right across the mall. Anyway, the store I'm thinking of is Haynes. Oh, Haynes. Haynes was in Penny's, or was Haynes... Was Haynes, Haynes was in, like, Boscov's or Lord & Taylor. No, Lord & Taylor is up to... We'll get to that last one. That's the tough one. Was, it, was Haynes with, where... Was Haynes it, was where Boscov's was, actually. It was? Yeah. I couldn't remember that. Okay, so now we have three more stores you have to get on the other side. So, what was the one store when, when Woodbridge Center opened? You didn't mention that store yet. What I mentioned, a and Store, Stearns, Haynes. Um. We mentioned the store a minute ago, but that's there now, but there were two stores before it. So we the Lord & Taylor. Did, what was Lord & Taylor before Lord & Taylor? I don't remember that. Anybody? Who? Oh, Orvax. Orvax is right. Orvax. All right. And now the real critical one that nobody remembers in between Orbox and Lord, Lord and Taylor it was kind of connected to Orbox I think but nobody ever remembers that one and I'm pretty sure it was a store Steinbach's Steinbach. right yes Steinbach right Steinbach's was in between I thought it was connected to Orbox I'm not sure Are you googling it yeah, we're googling. no cheating <laughs> cheating's not nice you were on a library board and you're we're cheating. Not, we're not really playing the game. Oh, you're not playing. Oh, you're not playing. Oh. Someone's got to fact check the trivia. You don't fact check the mayor. He's the mayor. Wait a minute. I got Steinbach's and Haynes. I'm the one that asked them, is asking the questions. I better know the answer. And I worked with Haynes when they first opened up. I remember them. I used to be a coin and stamp collector and I went there all the time to buy stamps and coins. It was so much fun. All right, well, that's been Dubs for President, <laughs> Dubs Runs for President, with uh, your mayor, your host, John McCormick, and my co-host, Alec Lesniak, mall expert of America. <laughs> thanks, pal. Thanks for joining me, man. Welcome. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Say, we're saying goodbye from C. Warren Library. Check the calendar. Check the website. There's lots of great things going on here for kids. We've got a whole lot of wonderful people who work here and volunteer. No, work here. They all volunteer here to make this a great place. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. <laughs>